K-I-L-R Taylor Games Hello gamers, simmers, and pilots. I am the Killer Gamer and welcome to the tour around the world. Maybe not around the world, but partially with Sierra Pro Pilot. We are doing a completely different simulator and we're going to match the flight plans, flight path as much as we can of the other simulators that we're featuring on this channel. Um like Flight Simulator 2 and 3 and 4. Uh, this one is limited more to the United States. There's a tad bit of Canada in there, and I believe Western Europe uh, is also included with this. At least I thought that's what I read, but we'll learn more as, as, as we go, go along. Uh, I haven't done a whole lot of flying with this simulator. I did just kind of a little bit of a, a testing with it just to get used to the controls because it doesn't quite work the way that that you think it should for some odd reason and you'll probably discover that too. Um, so it's going to be a bit of a discovery uh, in, in regards to the simulator. So yeah, Sierra Pro Pilot. Um, let me go ahead and show you. I picked this up. It's right here. A little boxed, box edition here. It's Pro Pilot 98. I don't know why the 98 is there. Um, I think it's just Sierra Pro Pilot. Uh, it may have just been a rebox. Uh, but this came out in 1997, which, uh, well, you know, it was real close to Flight Simulator 98. So the graphics are I, I would say compare uh, reasonably between Flight Simulator uh, 5 and Flight Simulator 98 uh, but not only that for those of you who follow the history of Flight Simulator this is not just Sierra this is not just the you know the Sierra games you know that did the King's Quest and the Space Quest uh, series it's not just that Take a look at the back of the box right here. Sub Logic. See? Now isn't that interesting? So Sub Logic, the ones that originally made uh, Flight Simulator, eventually worked with Sierra to put out a Flight Simulator. And if we open up the box here and just take a look at a few things here, it talks about pro positioning included as a standard feature global positioning system gps pinpoints your location with the most lifelike precision 
plus the added course plotter for accurate tracking and wind connection keeps helps keep your course true when piloting manually. There's over 3,000 U.S. airports uh, included, each recreated in unparalleled detail from runway length to surrounding geography. Uh, there's not a whole lot of taxiways, though. Uh, pro instrumentation, every flight control and instrument is fully functional and has been meticulously repro reproduced on emphasis on operational accuracy. There is a second disc that's got some um, like flight instruction on there. Uh, there's terrain. Only ProPilot gives you the most intricately detailed terrain of the continental United States, Toronto, and Montreal using 27 million points of elevation. Uh, let's see. Pro Power, master twin engine flight, just as you would in real life. Pro Nav Aids. They got, uh, you know, your VORs, ILSs, etc. Pro Realism. This has got voices from the air traffic control tower, other pilots in the flight pattern, and even your virtual co-pilots supply you with vital information plus the greatest sense of realism. So, it's interesting uh, because this has got ATC in it. It's a very um, basic type of ATC. Oh, look, plane. Um, but it's a lot more than what Fly Simulator 5 and Fly Simulator 98 had. In order to get uh, ATC on that, you had to have a program like ProFlight 98, or you had to uh, write your own adventure files um, and go through the um, process of putting together voices and everything else. Um, that's what I've been doing with Fly Simulator 4. But yeah, so this has all of this in here, and plus it's got uh, some planes here that you can fly, such as the Cessna Skyhawk, the Beechcraft Bonanza V-35, which is my favorite, Beechcraft Baron B-58, the King Air, and a Cessna Citation uh, Jet. And let's see... It's got hundreds of cities, including 29 photorealistic uh, cities, Albuquerque, Atlanta, Boston, Chicago, Cleveland, Dallas, Denver, Detroit, Houston, Kansas City, uh, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, Miami, Minneapolis, Montreal, New Orleans, New York City, New York City, get a rope, Philadelphia, Phoenix, Pittsburgh, Portland, St. Louis, Salt Lake City, San Diego, San Francisco, Seattle, Seattle Tampa, Toronto, Washington, D.C., plus visits visit a hundred more. Um, yeah, so I read somewhere that it included, it must have been in the manual or something that I was looking at, that it included some of Europe, too. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, so we're going to have some fun with this. And right now, let's just kind of show you some of the uh, menu options here. One thing I don't like about this is this does not have the flexibility and the settings that Flight Simulator has. I um, mean, you've got dual flight. I'm not quite sure what that is. I haven't messed with it. The ground lessons uh, will prompt you to put in disc number two. Uh, and it's got um, some videos and, and uh, voice instructions. Uh, restart and exit should be pretty apparent what that is. Here you can select your aircraft, and then you've got your checklist for your, your planes, fuel and cabin loading. You've got your crash detection, which I turned it off because uh, it's a little, a little tricky. Uh, auto coordination, we're going to turn that on. Uh, sync multi-engine controls, system re reliability. Uh, it's you know just like the old uh, flight simulators you can set it for uh, 80 percent or 90 percent or whatever <clears throat> so you can set all this here if you want uh, maybe we'll fool around with that a little bit you get di digital instrument readout not quite sure what that is exactly partial panel uh, let's see airspace you can position your aircraft airports, ATC communication, air traffic, navigational aids, weather, surface conditions, winds, loft, clouds, weather briefing, planning. 
so you can this is where you create uh, save and load your flight plans uh, you know something you know that you would do in flight simulator 98 with the uh, pro flight 98 or with the pro flight 2000 with uh, flight simulator 2000 uh, or just the standard when they finally introduced it uh, in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2002 you had the ability to create your create and save your flight plans on, and that 2004 FSX and prepared so same same thing uh, along here uh, then you got uh, saving your flight resuming your flight you got your views so you got some uh, outside cams tower cam set and then you can set up some cameras the GPS and then options so here you can select uh, from different types of uh, pilots okay we don't want to do that <laughs> uh, so you can save think of it like a save game so you can fly different things under different pilots uh, auto complexity will just change the scenery I guess based on where it is that you at I have that turned off um, I haven't really gotten to the point of what alternate graphics is at scenery get graphics I have this all maxed out then you got your brightness your sound flight controls uh, this is where you set up your uh, joystick then you got daylight you can select dawn day dusk or night you can do uh, specific date and time you got your time acceleration in case you're doing a long flight you want to speed it up a little bit you got slew and you got pause and that's it uh, <clears throat> that is all there is to it but this gets to be a little tricky uh, trying to fly and trying to start so let me kind of show you what I mean here so I have we're sitting at Chicago Megs as you would expect and if I hit shift and the numerical keypad we can look out the window and you can see there's just a runway here okay there's no taxiways or anything like that and it looks like the uh, the buildings Chicago downtown buildings are made out of brick <laughs> it looks like they're made out of brick or something <clears throat> uh, once in a while we see some planes come through here but um, but you know we got some um, stylized clouds going on here uh, when you select uh, when you do your flight plan <clears throat> you can generate weather so it'll generate some random weather although I didn't really see where you can actually well yeah you can you can create your uh, clouds and winds and stuff or your surf conditions so you can do that <clears throat> but let's go ahead and turn everything on so that way uh, we can get going with this flight so what we need to go ahead and do down here on the bottom we're going to switch on our battery altimeter and well you're supposed to turn on the uh, AV power like after you start so but I want to show you something here so the fuel down here you've got left both and right now if you if you hit the F key it'll move it between both oh now I know why this wasn't working when I was testing it out check this out so you got right left both and start so we can click on that and for the longest time I'm like okay it's looking looking good and it kept stopping and I couldn't figure out why well it's hard to see it um, and this was in a very small window when I was playing it I have to I'm doing this in VMware and there's no option in in this pro pilot to set it for a different screen size I can't uh, click and make it bigger or anything like that um, I had to make my main monitor like 800 by 600 and then uh, run VMware so that way it would match it so that way I could get a decent sized screen to look at here and so I couldn't see 
that this that there was an off selection on here and so I was moving it to left and it was working but now I can see that I can move it straight up to both and everything will work and if you hit the S key it's just like start and everything should be fine so now what we're gonna do is hit AV power Looks like I'm moving. Flight information, Mike 161. Zulu weather, temperature 5, niner, 2.5, 5, wind 303. Okay, I am moving. Temperature 2, niner, niner, 1. Landing and departing runway 36. Departures contact ground on 121.8. Arrivals contact approach on 118.4. Advise controller on initial contact. I'm still moving. <laughs> Somehow I got into the water. Okay, stop turning. Okay. So we changed the comm radio. Why am I still moving? So that yeah, there's confirm using one six five zero as your transponder setting. Uh my mistake. Transponder now set to one six five zero. Cessna seven two Lima. Yeah, th these are some of the things that I find are a little like I'm still turning. Why am I turning? I'm hitting the B key, which is supposed to be brakes, but I am still moving for some reason. Okay, so I think what we'll do is we'll move. All right, what did you say? One six five zero. So this is kind of. Uh, annoying too is when you click it's like these two are together so I have to go whoops oh man I had it so I gotta change this until it's one six and then I gotta change this until it's five zero Oops. Cessna 72 Lima, contact tower on 121.3 today. Contact tower on 121.3. Cessna 72 Lima, good day. Okay, I'm turning off the plane here for a moment. And I'm trying to get ourselves stopped because. Yeah, see, I don't know what it is with the controls of this thing. It just automatically put us there. Cessna 72 Lima, cleared for takeoff, runway 36. Cleared for takeoff, runway 36. Cessna 72 Lima. Cessna 85 Kilo, continue left downwind for 36. We'll call base. Cessna 85. Kilo. Okay, so we're we're off again. 
I know this may not be one of the most perfect lights you've ever seen, but at least we'll give you kind of an idea of um, how this program actually works. I think it's going to take a little bit to get used to. Okay, we're up in the air. And we did this. We did this on the other simulators too. We kind of flew in the downtown area. go. We're Cessna 72 Lima in case you haven't figured it out. Now it's hard to see a lot. If you hit F7, it'll bring that down a little bit and it'll give you some more uh, some more that you can actually where you can see over the control panel. If you hit F7 again, then you're like seeing from the front. So that's kind of good for um, landings. Then you can turn it off, turn that back on, you know, etc., etc. So that's the shift key and the numerical keypad, just like Flight Simulator. Um, I've been messing with the throttle up and down. It's the 3 and the 9 key. I think you can use plus and minus also on the regular keyboard. Trim, uh, 1 and 7. Your elevators, 2 and 8. Aerolons, 4 and 6. 5 centers. I don't have the greatest of luck with the rudder on this. So, I have auto coordination turned on. So, is the ATC better than ProFlight 98? For Fly Simulator 98. No, doesn't even hold a candle to it if you ask me. But it at least has something, whereas the basic Flight Simulator 98 did not. We're moving. I know we're moving, but look at this. We're sliding. We're sliding over this way. Do you see that? Landing 
So it changed the radio. Or it changed it here. I just need to click this to go to to bring it into active. So there is Chicago Hare right there in front of us. Why are we changing our transponder? I don't know. 5312. So, like before, I have to click these first two digits until I get to 53. And I gotta change this to 12. So, click, hold, till we get to 12. There it goes. Click on ident, I don't know. Cessna 72 Lima, climb and maintain 4,000. Climb and maintain 4,000. Cessna 72 Lima. Cessna 72 Lima, turn right heading 350. Turning right to heading 350. Cessna 72 Lima. Alright, so we'll make a right to 350 here. Now what I think is interesting about this is this actually navigates you into a pattern. Into uh, downwind, left, uh, upwind, base. There is an autopilot on here, which is cool. Let me see here. Outside cam is Alt 47 or Alt F7. Let's see, we can get some exterior shots here. It seems to take a bit for the ATC to route you around to where you need to go, but it does work. That was one of the things that I tested. Let's take a look here. Let's look at uh, air traffic. You can listen to other air. You see other aircraft. Well, I can't click on that for some reason. ATC communication. You've got landing preference. You can select us to touch and go, full stop. Uh, traffic pattern. You can have them direct you on the left hand or the right hand. You can select it to auto tune your COM1 radio. Auto taxi to runway. That's what happened when it. When we got uh, permission, it automatically just moved us over to the runway. Which, well, considering there wasn't any taxiways, that's not bad. Um, <laughs> you, 
you can request a different runway right here. You can do a go around, uh, select a new at, uh, altitude, do a say again. You can cancel your ATC. Closed traffic. I'm not sure what that is. Um, you can also put your own voice in here if you want to. There are instructions to do that. It's in a readme file. I'm going to bring our throttle back here. Cessna 72 Lima, turn left heading 330. Turn left heading 330. Cessna 72 Lima. I'm not sure why I did that. <laughs> And I'd have to say, I think the graphics, well, the graphics are definitely better than Flight Simulator 5. And, you know, that looks kind of, you know, like a city compared to uh, Flight Simulator 98. I mean, it, you know, it's kind of like photorealistic scenery, just, um, you know, very, very low quality. <laughs> And I don't know of a way to actually add, manually add airports to this. There are some airports that are not in this. Uh, some that I'm quite surprised are not in here. And one of them is not far off from where we'll be going. But we'll get to that. We will talk about that when that time comes. For now, let's enjoy Sierra Pro Pilot for for what it is. One thing's for sure, it's got a lot more airports than It's got a lot more than Flight Simulator 5, that's for sure. Flight Simulator 98, though, it might have better USA coverage, but as you know, Flight Simulator 98 has got stuff all over the world, whereas this doesn't. This is this is focused more on the U.S. So we're making a turn here. Cessna 72 Lima, fly heading 230. Fly heading 230. Cessna 72 Lima. Cessna 72 Lima, climb and maintain 4000. I think the winds and the weather are doing more pushing than what they should. Okay, that looks like Chicago hair right over there.
Nope, sorry. That's another... I don't even know if that is an airport, but that is the airport right there. I add power and I start going down. Why is that? our airport. See, now this one looks like it's got taxiways on it. Yes, yes, yes. I don't want to climb too high, though, because then they're going to have us drop to, like, 1,500 or something. look at my quick controls reference guide okay that was flaps see it's a it's a little annoying because not only did I get ProPilot but I got this which is ProPilot USA and I thought maybe oh this is more focused on the US where the other one has a little bit of Canada and well, I thought it had Western Europe, I'm not sure. But this is more of a... Like an updated, patched version of ProPilot is what this is. Because the other one is Windows 95. This uh, ProPilot USA is Windows 95 and 98 compatible. Well, I'm running this on Windows 98, so, well, you know. <laughs> But it, um... Cessna 72 Lima, fly heading 230. Fly heading 230. Cessna 72 Lima. It plays exactly the same. Um, it doesn't have any additional options as far as graphics, you know, to make the window bigger or anything. Um, it does add one extra airplane, but you have to go into the settings to add it. Uh, like the configuration file and I think it's got some quick uh, quick flights that you can click on to like oh let me do a Vegas flight or let me do a Washington DC flight so you can click on that and it kind of takes you there And you'll see right here, it's already set to 12075. Let's just click that.
They're like directing us over the airport. <laughs> Yeah, that does work. Oh. I just brought down some flaps a little bit. So you can click on it down here too, or the plus and minus. Plus or minus on the numerical keypad will also. But what I was saying is I couldn't find a quick reference card that had the controls on it in my ProFlight uh, box. What I have here is from ProPilot USA. You know the graphics are a little smoother in detail, I think. A little bit more finer detail. We're still uh, being shoved over to the side, though. Yeah, so here you go, 72 Lima right up here. Why are we getting pushed? Do you see that? We're like we're going forward and then we just go move over to a little bit. See that? So you can sort of see the taxiway there. Um, I think that's just part of the photo scenery. I'm assuming this is photo scenery, but you know, it's just obviously a very low quality. Which it would have to be because of how, you know, old this is. One thing I noticed, though, with ProPilot USA is that when I hit the B for brakes, it actually pops up saying brakes, so I know they're actually working. Um, and they don't seem to be doing that in this one here. Twenty-six one 
61 Echo. Cleared for the touch and go runway. 32 left. Booty 61 Echo. Cessna 72 Lima, fly heading 150. Fly heading 150. Cessna 72 Lima. Now I thought maybe making a separate series on Pro Pilot USA versus regular Pro Pilot, but I think it's going to be exactly the same or very very close to the same. Maybe I just use a different aircraft. I don't know. What do you all think? Do you think I should do a separate series just on Pro Pilot USA or are they close enough to being the same. Heck, I still have Pro Pilot 99 sitting up there. I haven't done a series on yet. And I think there's a Pro Pilot 2000. I don't have that one yet. Cessna 72 Lima, climb and maintain 1700. Climb and maintain 1700. Cessna 72 Lima. Archer 33 Golf, fly runway heading and continue climb. Archer 33 Golf. Cessna 72 Lima, fly heading 160. Fly heading 160. Cessna 72 Lima. Cessna 72 Lima, clear turn left base 432 left. Cleared left base 432 left. Cessna 72 Lima. Cessna 72 Lima, turn left heading 0. Five zero. Turn left heading zero five zero. Cessna seven two Lima. Twenty six one Echo. Fly runway heading and continue climb. Twenty six one Echo. I'm working on trying to keep this thing nice and steady. Cessna 72 Lima, fly heading 030. Fly heading 030. Cessna 72 Lima. Cessna 72 Lima, turn left heading 330. Turn left heading 330. Cessna 72 Lima. And there is the runway right there. Cessna 72 Lima, cleared for ILS approach, runway 32 left. Cessna 72 Lima. Okay, we are on our way. Archer 33 Golf, continue left down wind for 32 left, we'll call base. Archer 33 Golf.
261 Echo. Continue left down wind for 32 left. We'll call base. Mooney 61 Echo. Now you could go in and actually customize this and you know put your own voices in there. I don't mean just your specific voice. You know, you can let's say use edit voice pack from um you know Flight Simulator 10 or P3D. You can record your own stuff and throw it in here. Which we might do. Seems like we're slowly getting to the, uh, doesn't it? It's like that one thing of flaps is really preventing us from getting any decent speed. Now, see, this is where it starts getting weird. See, I'm, I'm like trying to turn it, but it's not turning very well. I'm hitting the B key, but it doesn't seem like we're stopping. I'm trying to turn us, and we're not turning. <laughs> we're turning that direction, that's not the way I'm turning. I'm hitting the B key and yet I'm turning to the which I was supposed to be the brakes but that doesn't seem to be working I am turning to the left but I'm not going that direction this is kind of the stuff that I'm talking about it's doing weird stuff it, it's really quite annoying <laughs> I can't even get us to turn. To get over to where the parking is at. It's almost... Okay, you want to know something weird? If I turn left, the plane is going right. On the ground. Okay, so we're we're coming around here. I'm pressing the B key. But I'm still moving. That's the pause key. <laughs> Thank you. 
Alt P, Control P. One of those is supposed to be the parking brake. That doesn't seem to work either. And this is where I have a little bit more control on, on Pro Pilot USA. So we're like, oh, I guess maybe we stopped inside the building. Okay, so, no, we're still moving. <laughs> we're still moving. See? <laughs> Archer 3 3 golf. Cleared for the touch and go runway. 3 2 left. I'm pressing B, but it's not breaking. So, yeah, this is the. Oh, now he stops. Okay. It's because I ran out of steam or something. Well, he said contact ground. Well, we're on ground. Are we contacting ground? I don't know. It doesn't seem to be doing anything. <laughs> oh, let's see. Ground control, 121.80. Well, that's kind... It's over here on comm, too. Uh, let's see. 121.80. Oh, that was the wrong one. It was one two. It was one two one point seven five. Okay. Well, I guess it just doesn't want to talk to us, so that's fine. So here we are. Um, <laughs> we're here at Chicago O'Hare. Um, yeah, that was a very interesting uh, flight. Like I said. It's nice, it's good, but oh, it's it's just frustrating control-wise um, because Microsoft Flight Simulator just runs better. It just works, you know? Uh, that's just the thing. But this is a very good uh, competition. This is, a, this is a very good competitive thing out in the market at the time. It was providing something that Microsoft Flight Simulator wasn't doing at the time, such as... ATC. This had air traffic control. And it wasn't just, you know, written up on the screen. It's talking to you. The ATIS messages were verbal. I mean, this this was pretty good um, when it came out. Um, you know, but with uh, add-ons uh, for Flight Simulator 98 and Flight Simulator 2000, you were able to take that simulator and just far surpass this. Um, no doubt. Also, the scenery, uh, the scenery on the ground looks good. Uh, like the scenery of, of Chicago, the textures for this time period, I think, look good. Uh, the detail in the airports, not so good. At least you had taxiways and stuff at the airports on Flight Simulator, and it covered the whole world. Uh, this one doesn't. Um... They're focusing more on the USA, but even in the USA, um, they don't have, hardly have any taxiways on these. And it's almost like, it's funny because I was mentioning how this is done by Sublogic. Uh, it just, it reminds me of the old Sublogic uh, flight simulators and the, uh, the scenery where you just had the runways out and that was it. It was, you know, just a couple of runways and that's it. That's all there was. Uh, and yeah, to be fair, uh, that is there in Flight Simulator 5 and I th Flight Simulator 98, but at least you could go in uh, with uh, scenery tools and, and uh, 
you know, build that up. And I've not been able to find any type of custom scenery or anything like that for Pro Pilot. Maybe it's out there and I just haven't found it. And if you know about it, hey, let me know in the comments below. And if you thought this video was useful or helpful or maybe brought back some memories, leave a thumbs up. Uh, let me know that you're out there. And uh, I'll definitely look, you know, I'll definitely do some more videos of this. I think, uh, I think I'll move to the Pro Pilot USA on the next one. But, uh, yeah, uh, subscribe, let me know. Um, again, just be a, be a part of the, the, killer, the killer community and ring that notification bell so that way you know when a new video is uploaded to this channel, whether it's Pro Pilot or uh, Flight Simulator, and I've got some other ones that I'm working on. So, anyways, thank for wa thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next leg of our journey. Mm -hmm.